what's going on? Today I wanted to talk about the seven habits of highly effective people and how I've implemented them into our business and what they mean to me. So the first habit is to be proactive. And really what that means to me is taking initiative and really doing the things that you can anticipate will need to be done, but rather than you know, waiting for them and retroactively trying to catch up, you just kind of stay ahead of that. And so one example that we had a lot of trouble with early on um, was just scrambling to get all the documents in order that lenders would request. Obviously we're in the real estate business and so constantly we'd be trying to you know, take a week and a half of our time to get all the documents in order for a specific project or property. And rather than doing that, we decided to create the drive folders for all of our entity information, personal tax returns, personal financial statements, all the property specific details so that as we send things out to different lenders or reoccurring lenders, we have all those documents in order and it's a much faster process for us to get that over to them. So that's just one example of you know something that we've found we can take initiative on. And it's also you know, allowed us to maybe stand out with certain lenders that ah, we were close on some things, they didn't really you know, know if we were the best candidate for the loan or they didn't like our track record or you know the length of time that we've been in real estate, things like that. But because we got back to them within 30 minutes of that initial phone call with the majority of the documents that they were requesting, it made us stand out, you know, hey, they've got it together even though they've only been doing this for a few years, you know, they clearly have a good grasp on this. So again, just kind of an example there. Um, begin with the end in mind is the second habit. So really, kind of what that means to me is having a clear vision and goals of what you want and then reverse engineering that to you know, take actionable steps to get there. And so really it's easy to kind of get caught up in this whirlwind of to-dos and tasks, but when you have goals and you're constantly revisiting those goals, tracking things, it's a lot easier to actually obtain what you want. Very simple example here, I made a goal to post 150 YouTube shorts in 2023 and so if you break that down divide it out by the weeks that's about three shorts a week so whether i spend one day and, and record three shorts or i do one short every other day again kind of a simple example but easy to just reverse engineer and implement lead measures to obtain the lag measures or the goals that you want to obtain The third habit is put first things first. So I know I kind of touched on the whirlwinds of your to-do list and there's definitely things that you have to do that aren't necessarily ultimately productive. And so one thing that I've found um, that helps me the best is first thing in the morning, I like to knock out quick tasks, five minutes, respond to emails, all of those, you know, maybe not so productive tasks, but things that still need to be done. And then from nine to 12, I've still got a lot of energy in the morning, a lot of, you know, let's say willpower to do some of the deeper thinking work. So that's the time where, you know, I still have a lot of that energy to get those things done and focused on productive tasks. So towards the end of the day, you know, as I'm also catching up on emails that came in through the day or other tasks that need to be done when my willpower is depleting, I've already knocked out the most important tasks earlier in the day. I don't have anything too good for habit four, but uh, habit five is seek first to understand and then to, un to be understood. And so what that means to me is actually listening to people, especially us being in real estate, we're investors, we want to buy properties at discounts, we're cash buyers, we can close fast. It's easy to want to pitch what we bring to the table to sellers that we're talking to without maybe hearing their whole story first or understanding their situation. And so. By listening first, that's allowed us to really understand people's situation. What are they looking for? Is the you know amount of money they're getting most important, or is it the timeline that they're closing on? Or do they like getting passive income but don't want to be a landlord? And so by listening, that's allowed us to introduce creative financing offers and really to stand out with other offers on the table that maybe don't or aren't tailored to the specific needs and wants of the seller. And so that's you know, example of, of how we've implemented that and really just try and listen before we go into our pitch of you know what we can offer. Uh, the sixth habit is synergy, which ultimately means that the whole is greater than the individual parts. And so I think a good example of this is when you're first starting, uh, specifically in real estate or really any business, 
It's hard for you to delegate tasks because you want to finger on everything. You want to make sure everything's being done right or the way that you want it to be done. And ultimately, you're, you're probably not the expert in everything. And so that's absolutely true in our business. Once we were able to you know, give up running comps to our agent, who's awesome, he knows the market better, that's what he does all day. Our contractor, um, our project manager, our property manager, our subcontractors, we can't do everything well. And by delegating those tasks, giving up responsibility, we've created you know, a better team altogether because of those individual components that are better at their one thing. So that's, that's what synergy means to us and how we've kind of implemented and delegated specific tasks within our business. And the last one, habit seven, is sharpen the saw. And what that means to me is just continually learning and growing as a person, as a business owner. And so, you know, how we do that, we're constantly networking. We're trying to connect and learn with people that are you know, doing what we're we're trying to do maybe at a higher level, we're reading books, we're listening to podcasts, we're um, joining mentorships to get us in the room with more people. And so you just, there's never a point where you're done. You've learned everything you need to learn. There's always more, things are always changing. And so you constantly want to be, you know, engaging and learning new things. So hope these were, you know, kind of interesting to see how in a real estate business, you can actually implement these things right away and you know take action and become a highly effective person.